Okay, I think we should uh, probably get started again because uh, I've just been made an offer that I cannot refuse. I'm told that uh, if I can bring this to an end before 11.15, uh, I will get uh, some time off as department chair in the economics department, so I'm going to uh, try to end this as quickly as I can. <laughs> uh, so this session um, is on the role of a lender of last resort. My name is Peter Montiel, and I'm a professor here at the economics department uh, at Williams. Uh, let me start by saying that a probably more precise title for the session would have been the role of the IMF as an international lender of last resort. And that's what our speakers are going to be discussing. As we, as we know, a lender of last resort is someone who steps in and lends when no one else will. And in the domestic economy, this role is usually played by the central bank. And the ones who get loaned money, the ones who are the borrowers, are the domestic financial institutions. And we think of this role of lender of last resort as being socially productive because it prevents well-functioning banks from being rendered insolvent by a depositor panic. But in the international context, is a situation somewhat different. Um, in this case, the potential borrowers are governments rather than financial institutions. And then we face the following questions. Uh, <coughs> first, do we need an international lender of last resort? And particularly, do we need a formal international institution to function as lender of last resort? Second, uh, is the IMF currently adequately playing that role? And third, if not, should it be? And what would it take for it to do so? So our speakers are going to address, uh, are going to help us think about these questions uh, this morning. And we are fortunate to have three very distinguished panelists to help us do so. So I'm going to introduce them in alphabetical order and in the order in which they will speak. Uh, first, Professor Michael Bordeaux is the Professor of Economics and Director of the Center for Monetary and Financial History at Rutgers University. Uh, Professor Bordeaux has, uh, is a historian of macroeconomic history. He has published extensively on macroeconomic history and on the uh, international financial system. So hopefully he can provide us a general background to the issue of, to this, uh, of this panel. Our second panelist will be Guillermo Ortiz. He is the chairman of Grupo Financiero Banorte in uh, Mexico City. Uh, and probably more relevant to what we're going to be talking about today, he was former finance minister of Mexico <coughs> at a very interesting time, uh, at the beginning of 1995, right after the Mexican crisis. Notice I said after the Mexican crisis. He was not finance minister when it happened. Uh, he was appointed to help pick up the pieces. Um, and he was subsequently governor of the Bank of Mexico and uh, very interestingly, he was also for several years an executive director at the IMF. Finally, Ted Truman uh, is a senior fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics, and he has been Assistant uh, Secretary of the U.S. Treasury for International Affairs uh, for several years. Uh, he also, uh, for much longer, directed the uh, Division of International Finance of the Board of Governors of the Fed, and uh, he has been a visiting professor here at Williams. So without further ado, we're going to start with Michael Bordeaux. 